Hello everyone. I'm Barry Douglas and I'm really honoured to be asked to say a few words about the great Van Cliburn, our van. Such a colossus in the piano world. A passionate human being, decent, honest, full of fun and playfulness, great supporter of young pianists and always helping in whatever way he could. And certainly after I won my gold medal in Moscow in 1986, Van was very supportive of me with lots of good tips. Not only practice hard, but learn lots of repertoire, but do know how to enjoy your life. And he enjoyed his life. What a great friend and person. Sorely missed. So, as a little kind of gesture from me, I'd like to play a small piece by Rachmaninoff. And of course, Rachmaninoff was very close to Van's heart and he was a great performer of Rachmaninoff's music. So this is one of his Momo Musico Opus 16. This is number five. Hello, my dear friends. I must say it is an honor that I knew Van Cliburn. He was my mentor, my friend, and he was such a special person in my life. After winning Van Cliburn competition in 2001, I spent a few years in Fort Worth and I spent such incredible moments with this genius pianist.
But I would like to share with you a moment which was not in Fort Worth, but in Moscow. I was on tour in Japan and I was finishing my tour and the day when I was arriving in Moscow, when Clyburn gave this historical comeback concert at the Moscow Tchaikovsky Conservatory Great Hall, where he won Tchaikovsky competition in 1958 and he was coming back uh, and performing very rare performance of the first half was a recital including Chopin's second sonata and in the second half Tchaikovsky concerto number no. one so these two different concerts in one concert was very special so I'm arriving from the airport to the concert hall with the huge bouquet of flowers roses big burgundy because he loved burgundy colors big burgundy roses a bouquet of 70 roses and after this incredible concert, it was fantastic. His phrasing, his musicality, his sound. It was just an incredible concert, unforgettable concert. I am coming on stage to present these roses to him. And he specifically asked, everyone to wait until the end of the concert that he will meet everyone at the green stay, uh, green uh, room because everyone wanted to present him gifts and flowers uh, but a lot of people wanted me to present these roses on stage so I'm coming with this big bouquet of roses he can't see my face and he was kind of surprised why someone is coming on stage when he said don't come anyone but then I'm moving the bouquet on the side and he sees my face and his big smile I see on his face and he's saying Alenochka he called me Alenochka he said please come my darling I'm giving his him this bouquet and he said please stay here sit I will play for you on this stage on this incredible stage where he won Tchaikovsky competition with this huge audience full concert hall I'm standing next to him on this stage and he played for me one of the encores Rachmaninoff prelude G sharp minor I was in tears with the joy with the happiness with this incredible music and his touch and his heart everyone in the audience that moment felt this huge heart I wanted to share this story just for you to know that he was not just a fantastic, incredible artist and musician and pianist, but also a great human being, a great person. So after he finished, he hugged me with his beautiful big hands. And then we went backstage together. So that moment was so unforgettable for me that I always will just cherish this moment and it will always be in my heart. And of course, I will always celebrate July 12th birthday of Van Clyburn, together with many musicians, many pianists, and of course, all Russian people for whom Van Clyburn was, is, and will be a hero and a legend. So I would like to say happy birthday, my dearest Van Clyburn.
Hi everyone. As a part of my Ben Clyburn tribute, I am about to play a work which has a very particular meaning uh, for me uh, because of connection with two people, with two names, uh, which had probably the most influence on me, on my formation as a concert pianist, as a musician, uh, namely Vera Gornostaeva, my teacher in Moscow Conservatory, and Van Clyburn. For Vera, this nocturne was uh, like a cornerstone, like a foundation uh, for uh, a, a pianist because of all those uh, difficulties which it posed to the performer. And uh, the connection with uh, Van Clyburn, whom unfortunately I was uh, never able to see in person. Uh, when I came to Texas uh, to participate in the 2013 Van Clyburn competition, uh, there was a big gala opening, big gala concert. And I clearly remember that uh, somewhere in the middle, uh, the lights went off and then uh, we were all listening to this very beautiful recording of, of, of Van Clyburn play, playing this nocturne. And I remember that uh, this performance, this recording, uh, happened to be for me, you know, one which stays uh, for you throughout your life. I remember it was very modest, uh, very shy, very lyrical, but it was not that um, very pleasing Chopin, which we uh, used to listen sometimes at the concert, but it was rather a picture of man, a picture of uh, musician is a very strong will and uh, I I just keep, keep, keep those memories with me and uh, that is why I would like to share uh, this music with, with all the listeners who admire Van Clyburn as much as I do. Thank you so much, stay safe and enjoy the music.
first time I met Van was back in 1962 at the first competition. It was a very brief encounter, and thinking in all of the following years, the number of times I was with Van, you could count on the fingers of your one hand. There were not many. I guess I always appreciated how he distanced himself from the competition. He never interfered with the judging procedure. But the first time I saw Van or heard him play was three years before that in 1959. He was only 24 years old. And I heard him play a magnificent Brahms B-flat concerto with Fritz Reiner and the Chicago Symphony. Now, Brahms B-flat, uh, many people's consideration is the most difficult concerto and certainly the most noble, but it seemed to fit Van to a T. Now, Reiner was the epitome of a very stern, almost tyrannical conductor, but he and Van got along famously because in the ensuing years they collaborated on recordings of the Beethoven Fourth, the Beethoven Fifth, the Schumann, the Rachmaninoff Second, and at that time Van also recorded with the Symphony, the Prokofiev Third Concerto and the McDowell D minor recording, which I treasure a lot. I always wondered why more people didn't ask Van to play the Brahms B flat. They always seemed content to hear him play Tchaikovsky or Rachmaninoff. Maybe Van had something to do with that, I don't know. But Van certainly liked the Tchaikovsky to the end of his life. I heard him comment uh, towards the end that playing the Tchaikovsky was like going to the opera. And in addition to admiring his concerto performances, I was an admirer of him in recital, and I heard him play recitals twice in the 1970s. His playing was always so rock solid, so musical. He had this big sound, uh, but never harsh. His playing was without ostentation or mannerisms, except for one thing. He would start both his recitals that I heard with the Star Spangled Banner, which caused the audience to have to stand up. And we pianists joke that in that way he not only got a standing ovation at the end of the concert, but at the beginning. In those days, 50 years ago, standing ovations were not that common. He would start the Star Spangled Banner in the style of the first composer on the program, for instance, when he played the Appassionato of Beethoven. Uh, he played, uh, or another recital he played, uh, I believe it was the Brahms G Minor Rhapsody, and his performance of the Star Spangled Banner was very slow and ponderous and rich and choral. The last time I saw Van was about five months before he died. I was playing with the Fort Worth Symphony along with three other past winners, and some of us went over to visit Van. I kind of expected him to be rather glum because we knew he was already quite ill, but instead he was ebullient, almost joyful. I admired his faith, his acceptance of death, and several times he remarked how grateful he was for having lived such a full life. We'll never forget Van.
this is Joyce Young. I had the fortune and the honor of meeting Van Cliburn a number of times in my life. The first time was in 2005 when I arrived in Fort Worth, Texas to compete for the 2005 piano competition. And he greeted each and every contestant with such warmth and kindness, big smile. And I remember I was just awestruck. And when I got to shake his hands, I couldn't believe how big his hands were. They must have been double the size of mine. A few years later, I was performing Tchaikovsky's first piano concerto with uh, Fort Worth Symphony. I knew Van was going to be in the audience and I was very nervous uh, for the concert. I got to meet him when I finished um, during intermission. I came outside and there he was. He said, does it bother you when people clap after the first movement, which is what had happened moments prior? And he said, I was the one that started it and people kept giving me the stink eye. I don't think he said the word stink eye, but he said all these people were like, you're not supposed to clap during the piece in between movements. And I said to them, when it's this good, I have to clap. So he was just laughing and I laughed and that was just one of the best memories um, I have of him. But I think the most important and crucial and memorable uh, moments I'll never forget for the rest of my career came um, a few years later. This was in 2012 when um, I was asked to come to an interview with Van Cliburn at New York Public Arts Library. This event took place uh, a bit before um, his uh, prized possessions were being auctioned off at Christie's and um, his beloved mother's piano was on stage and I was supposed to play it um, for the audience um, and he was going to talk about the memory um, of his, his mother and uh, how much he loves this instrument. So I was um, very, very nervous to perform works by Chopin and Rachmaninoff for Van, pieces he knows so well and uh, he was seated on stage. His head was practically inside the piano and he was listening so intently. So I faced him and the audience and I sat down and I remember just being um, a nervous wreck. But um, I, I played pieces that I really loved myself. So um, I was glad that I got through it uh, without <laughs> um, taking a bad turn. And when it was over, I bowed and he gave me a hug and I went to my seat. And then the most amazing thing happened. He became very silent and it appeared as if he was um, shedding a few tears. He had a very emotional uh, private moment um, in front of all of us and we didn't know what to say. I think we all froze because um, we didn't know what was going on. And, um, and then he found his composure and um, continued with um, the interview after saying um, powerful music does that to people. But later, um, he pulled me aside and we had um, a few minutes of conversation that'll stay with me forever. He said, I'd like to tell you what happened when I was silent on stage. My entire life, I was trying to share and deliver the love um, I had for music, share the love with um, everyone else. I was so desperate to share the beauty and its meaning to everyone around me, concert after concert, that's um, all I cared about. And when I was listening to you, that love and dedication for music um, found its way back to me. So it was a full circle, and I thank you for your gift. As you can imagine, I didn't know what to say. I was just awestruck and uh, so moved by um, his vulnerable um, revelation uh, that he had the end even the fact that I could bring that kind of um, th 
thought into his mind and it was just um, an honor uh, having the chance to even play for him and knowing that my music had reached him uh, was just so special and I really uh, thought to myself if I can um, do this for the rest of my life this is what I'm going to do because what's better than really sharing um, that passion and the love um, for, for music and delivering it to others and um, being a part of this wonderful um, world where you can really communicate your emotions. So for that, um, Van Clyburn will always stay with me throughout my career as I go through concert after concert. So thank you, Van, for all your inspired performances and your kindness and your support. We will um, always treasure you. And uh, thanks again for all you did for Young Pianists.
Meeting Van Cliburn in 1997 at the competition wasn't actually my first time meeting him. It was my second. The first time was when I was maybe eight or nine years old, and he came to the Bay Area to play where I was growing up and uh, gave a phenomenal recital. I even remember it uh, as, a, as a young child. Uh, I knew it was something amazing even back then. Uh, and I remember he played one of my favorite pieces at the time, which was the uh, Opus 53 Polonaise of Chopin. And that was my uh, go-to piece. Um, and what I remember from that day was that he knelt down on the floor backstage when I came back, waited in line, uh, and talked to me for quite a while. Um, this nothing kid who had come to hear one of the greatest in the world play uh, a recital in a hometown theater, and here was this immense figure spending time just to make me feel welcome and valued and heard. And the wonderful thing about all of this is that in 1997, when I met him again, I got to tell him what an impact that had on me and what a difference it made in my life. And even after 97, as a professional, I take that memory with me wherever I go. Because from Van, I learned that it's not necessarily what you do on stage that's going to last. It's, it's the differences that you make off the stage and how you affect lives just by being who you are. And, and Van, I will always be grateful immensely for, for that. You have given me amazing gifts, and that is foremost among them.
Hello, my name is Alexander Cobrin, and it is a great honor for me and privilege to be able to share a few thoughts, a few memories about Ben Clyburn. Uh, you know, there are always these uh, moments in life when you realize that something extraordinarily important happened or happening to you, which you would carry on with you for the rest of your life, having this as one of the most memorable moments. And obviously one of those memories was me meeting Ben Clyburn in person. Needless to say that for all Russians who grew up um, after the 1958 and even before, of course, uh, who uh, watched Van Clyburn performing in the Moscow Conservatory. He immediately became an idol. He be immediately became a musician who touched hearts and whose concerts were events of enormous importance for everyone. And uh, my first CDs, my first recordings, which I bought, which I was able to buy, uh, when I started touring very early in my teenage years, those recordings were of Ben Clyburn playing Brahms Concerti, Concerti with uh, Reiner conducting. And at that time, of course, there was no way I could have ever imagined that sometime later I was able to meet this great man, to talk to this great man, and more importantly, to listen to this great man, not only play, but talk about life, uh, about music, you know, it was, I remember that evening in his house, um, I should probably say what uh, preceded that evening because my phone rang in the morning and uh, I see the unknown caller and how often do you take unknown callers numbers? But at that moment, I, for some reason, I took the number took the phone and uh, said hello and somebody on the other line in Russian speaks to me in Russian says Sasha hello this is Vanya and Vanya was his Russian name uh, Van Vanya uh, with no accent and I was pretty um, mean I think on the phone I said who, who, they, who is this who the heck is this uh, what Vanya and then I heard um, him switching back to English and said, Alex, this is Van. And of course, I was absolutely paralyzed. Um, how often Ben Clyburn is calling you on your, on your cell phone? And of course, I was touched and honored to be invited to his, over his house with, alongside with my friends, with Davide Cabassi, who stayed there at the time in Fort Worth and uh, with others and we had an amazing time listening to him and i remember very clearly that he said something very simple and yet so profound he said whenever time comes of struggle of difficulty of sadness and of any sorts of crisis Always remember that we are blessed that we can touch this music, we can play these notes, and we could carry these deep emotions to other people who cannot do that, who can only appreciate. And when we worry about our lives, when we worry about things that are happening around us, we always have to remember how blessed we are by being able to play our instrument and make music. I think meeting Ben Clyburn was the, one of the most inspirational uh, moments in my life, very influential moments of my life. Um, I think he was a true musician in all possible ways, who was never self-centered, who was so dedicated to music, truly, who was helping people, who was so anything else about himself uh, and I think this is the example of a true musician that we all 
should be trying to achieve. And again, I'm so grateful to my life, to the destiny that brought me to Fort Worth to let me meet this wonderful man. And of course, this memory will stay for the rest of my life with me.
when I was a kid, probably around late middle school or early high school, my dad had a coworker who donated his LP player and his LPs to me. And among the recordings he gave me was a record of Van Cliburn playing Rachmaninoff Third Piano Concerto. Um, I knew who he was, um, and I listened to it. I really enjoyed it, but I didn't really understand uh, the importance of uh, Van Cliburn until we learned about the Cold War in European History AP. And we actually did learn about Khrushchev wanting to showcase the cultural prowess of the Soviet Union decided to hold a piano competition. And in that competition, an American superseded the political effects and influences and became the winner of the competition. And that was Van Cliburn, obviously. It's really powerful that the thing to bridge the two nations at war was classical music. And I think in this day and age, the power of music to bring people together is even more important. And we really have Van Cliburn to thank for showing us how we possibly can do that. Hello, I'm Philippe Bianconi. I'm happy to talk to you today from my home in France. 35 years ago, I was given the opportunity to live one of the most exciting, thrilling, terrifying, life-changing experiences. I entered the Van Cliburn competition. The Van Cliburn competition was a big milestone in my life and it did start my international career. But it was also one of those 
intense moments that you remember vividly for the rest of your life. I got to meet wonderful people. Uh, my host family, Dr. and Mrs. Murphy, became lifelong friends. And among the great things that I had to experience, one of them was meeting Van Clyburn. At the time, Van had been away from the concert stage for a few years. But to me, he was a true legend. He was this legendary young American pianist who had won the Tchaikovsky competition in Moscow in 1958. He had made so many fabulous recordings, uh, most of which I knew and adored. And getting to know him personally was a true privilege. Well, you might think that pianist who had had such a stellar career and who was retired from the stage would be somewhat bitter and maybe a little bit jealous of young, successful pianists. Well, Van was the most generous, uh, the warmest, the most good-hearted person that uh, I could ever imagine. He was so supportive to all of his contestants during the competition. He was such a presence, a comforting presence to all of us. And he had this wonderfully positive attitude. I never became really close with them, but I, I saw him a number of times after the competition. And he always had this positive attitude. And during all his life, he was so supportive and he was so generous with young pianists. Thank you, Van, for being such a wonderful figure and wonderful example to all of us who have had the privilege of knowing you.
Today, we're remembering Van Cliver, a musician who conquered Russia and the world, a gatekeeper and the most powerful ambassador to classical music. He was certainly a person who changed the life of many. In conversations, he often talked about the responsibility of dealing with the great thoughts and minds of the great composers, and that inspired him immensely. He said, you want to be faithful to what they wrote. You want to be able to convey that to someone else. He deeply cared about the future of the classical music, and he saw great importance in the new generation of young musicians. He called them wonderful, inspired missionaries of music. One of the most important subjects was how to keep alive the great values and traditions of the past. I remember one conversation, the outcome of which was particularly funny for them. We talked quite a bit of what should be done in order to keep all the values, traditions, etc. Until there was a suggestion to name that process a museum. But jokes aside, I think there are many who still believe in work to ensure the preservation of the highest possible levels of musical achievement. And I believe Van would be pleased to see the continuation of what he dearly loved and believed in. Especially that everything is in the hands of young musicians who lend their talents to the world to make it better. The organization that holds his name, the Van Cleveland Foundation, continues to do its brilliant work promoting the ideas of education and enlightenment. The art of Van Cleaver, his recordings, and the work of young artists he helped to support, continue to serve not only to heal our souls, but also to educate our minds.
God richly bless all of you, as well as our great city of Fort Worth, our great state of Texas, and our great country, the United States of America. I personally want to thank you all for all of your faithful support. Never forget, I love you all from the bottom of my heart forever. <laughs>